And so we need greater wisdom in our lives. And one of the scriptures that we've been using is in Proverbs. And we talked a lot about Proverbs last week, and we will continue to do so. But this week, I wanted to focus our time and our attention on what some people call the Proverbs of the New Testament, and that's the book of James. Uh, some of you love the book of James, and some of you don't like the book of James. And the reason you don't like the book of James, perhaps, is because he says it so straight and so strong. Some of us like a little nuance, don't we? We like it to be said just a little bit nicer. <laughs> and then there's others that like the book of James because he is so blunt. And, 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 and you, just really are, uh, you just really enjoy that. And so we want to make sure you get your dose of James. But I do want to encourage you that through this week, would you read through the book of James? It's not a very long book, uh, but you could do that through this week. Just kind of plotting your way through the book of James. Because I believe that there's some amazing truth for you that we're going to tease out over this week with some of the devotionals. But we're also going to be looking at it uh, individually, I hope, and saying this. Holy Spirit, will you speak to me as I read your word? Whatever you want to say to me as I read the book of James, will you say it to me? I'm listening. And matter of fact, not only am I listening, but I'm going to do something with it. And that's, that's, that's my hope and prayer for you today. Now, I don't know if you, you read the, the Bible through in a year. We do that as a church. It's available to you. We have soap guides out in the lobby, and I, they're probably somewhere online as well. But, but I, wanna, I wanted to just draw your attention to something today. As I was reading the, the book of Luke, chapter 18, I noticed something that I had not seen before. And you really wouldn't notice it unless you read the whole chapter. There are three things that happen right there, and, and this is kind of fresh content, so you won't have anything on the screen, so you're going to have to, you know, use your fingers if you want to look at the book, all right? Luke 18, if you're at home, check this out. I just want you to see something. There's three stories that are mentioned in Luke chapter 18. The first is the parable of the persistent widow, okay? Then there's that great story. It's not really a story. It's an interaction that Jesus has with some children. And, and you know, we, we've heard this, let the little children come to Jesus. And it's just so cute. And we just all get, crawl up in Jesus' lap and it's just so beautiful. Right? You know what I'm talking about, some of you. Then, at, towards the end of the chapter, you see a blind man receiving his sight. And I, I thought this was really fascinating just to kind of set the tone this morning. You first have the persistent widow who's asking. And matter of fact, she's asking at such a level that she's kind of become annoying. Get this. And so Jesus is telling this story about this widow that's become annoying in her asking. Then you see the let the children come, which I think this is true because the word of God says whoever in there. So that means that though we focus on the age, we say, oh, those little cute little children squeeze their cheeks. I think Jesus has expanded that. That if you're a follower of Jesus today, you are one of his children. Get this. Now, I, of course, he loves the kids, right? We, we know Jesus loves the kids. But you're one of his kids, regardless of how old you are. You're one of his kids. So get this. So you've got the persistent widow. You've now got the, 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 the image of us being his kids. Then on the back end of that, you have the healing of this man who was blind. I love that. Because if you see the progression of it, it's the asking. It's the persisting. It's the recognition that I'm his child. And on the back side of that, on the back side of that is the healing. Do you see it? And it's all right there for you. I, I don't know if that's amazing to you because you're not responding at all. <laughs> but I think that's something that's pretty amazing as we think about what James says to us in James chapter 1, verse 5. Listen to this. And this sets the tone for the entire week. Here it is. James chapter 1, verse 5. If you need wisdom, what should you do? Ask. 
Ask our generous God and he will give it to you and he will not rebuke you for asking. Did you notice he did not rebuke the lady who was so annoying in her persistent asking? Now, I'm an earthly father. I'm not a heavenly father as far as I know. And as an earthly father, if my kid, I won't name any names, continued to ask me for something, I might struggle to say, young child, I love you, but... If you keep asking for that thing, if you keep doing it, you and me are going to have problems, right? I mean, it, it, like, it, and I'm saying that in a nicer way. I'm sure some of you would be much more controlled. Some of you would be way off the handle. But there's this thing happening in the scripture that, that I think we all have to see. God does not get annoyed at your asking. He doesn't get annoyed at your persistent asking. I think that's amazing to think about, that you literally could walk through your day every day going, God, give me wisdom, 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 God, give me wisdom. You with me? And the Heavenly Father at no point says, shout it! He just, he says, I love it. I love their persistence. I, I love the fact that, the, I love it when my kids ask. And not just that they're asking, I, I, I not only want to hear them, but, but I'm going to do something. I'm going to bring the healing they're asking for. I'm going to bring the wisdom they're asking for. I'm going to do what I do because I am a loving father. So powerful. And so James tells us we should ask. So if you need wisdom, if you want wisdom, if you want to gain greater wisdom, you need to ask God for it. Here's a passage of scripture I shared with you last week. This is in Luke chapter 11, verse 9 through 10. And I tell you, ask and it will be given. This is Jesus speaking. The same Jesus that shared those stories. The same Jesus that said, let the kids come. The same Jesus that, that said, what do you want? And the man said, I want to be healed. And the man asked for his healing, and Jesus gave it to him. Powerful. Same Jesus right here. If you seek, you'll find. Knock, and it will be opened. For everyone, see it again, asks. For everyone who asks, they'll receive. Whoever seeks, they'll find. Whoever knocks, the door will be opened. Do you see how simple this is? And how often do we make it just so complicated? Like we sometimes won't ask because we're not sure if it's a good thing to ask. Do you not think God can figure that out? Don't be concerned about that. Matter of fact, the Bible says that you have insurance if, with the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, everything that comes out of your mouth eventually gets to God, but it gets to God in the right way, even if you ask wrongly. It's dummy proof. Think about that. And so let's ask. Let's ask God. Let's ask God for things that we've never asked for before. Let's just begin to ask him incessantly. Let's just begin to persist in our asking. Yes, uh, God, I need this. Yes, God, I need that. God, help me here. God, 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 God. And at no point will he say, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so good. Ooh. And so we got to ask God for wisdom. Have you heard this phrase, uh, wisdom comes with age? Look, I've talked to some of you, and I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I've met older people who aren't very wise. So just because you grow and get gray hair and get some wrinkles and some crow's feet and, and skin tags or whatever you got, Just because that happens to you doesn't mean that you're wise. Doesn't mean that you're growing in wisdom. But 
God says you can. God says if you ask, you will. And so here's something I want to just tease out for a few moments and then I'm done. Because I think it's important that we ask God for greater wisdom and he's going to answer that prayer and he's going to do that because he is the originator of all wisdom. But he's also put some things in our life that are very tangible. One is the word of God. If you're looking for wisdom, go there. The other thing I would say to you, and this is something we've lost. This is something we've lost in our culture. I need to also ask older believers to tell stories of God's faithfulness. Not just ask God for wisdom. I need to ask older, let me stress, believers, not just older people, not just friends, not just your parents who may not be believers, come on, ask older believers who are followers of Jesus to tell you the stories of God's faithfulness. It's so good. Listen to this. In, in Joshua, Joshua was telling the people that at some point this is going to happen. He says, he says to them, because he's teaching them this spiritual principle of telling the stories of God's faithfulness. And in Joshua chapter 4, verses 20 through 24, hear these words. It was there at Gilgal that Joshua piled up 12 stones. I don't know if you've ever heard this story. And so he piles up these 12 stones as a marker, as a point of remembrance. Get this. And so as he, as, he, as he makes these 12 stones stand high that he had taken from the Jordan River, in verse 21, watch this, then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future your children will ask. In other words, he knew it was coming. And the reason he knew it was coming was it was a part of their tradition. He knew the kids would eventually ask. We've lost so much of that. And young people, hear me. You gotta wise up. There's a point where you have to recognize that I know you think you're cool. And I know you think you're bulletproof. I used to think the same thing. But guys, there is power in hearing the stories of God's faithfulness from believers, from men and women that have walked through it. Whoo! I find so much encouragement from hearing those stories. I do. He says, in the future, your children will ask, hey, daddy, what do these stones mean? Yeah? Hey, daddy, what's this whole juice and wine and bread stuff? Hey, 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 daddy, what, what's this painting that you got here? What does it mean? Hey, Dad, what, why do you have that framed in your office? Hey, Dad, why does that thing sit on your office desk? You, you get me. Hey, Daddy, there's somebody's going to ask. And, and this is what he says. When they ask, he says, then you can tell them this. This is where the Israelites cross the Jordan on dry ground. It's the second time he did it. He took the rocks from the Jordan River and he said, this is where they crossed on dry ground and then watch this for the lord your god dried up the river right before your eyes and he kept it dry until you were all across just as he did at the red sea when he dried it up until they had all crossed over in other words he did it once and he'll do it again the good news of hearing these stories is we remember again that not only has he done it once and he's done it for millions of people, but he can do it for you. Do you not think that's going to make your faith rise up? Is that not going to make you want to ask God for great things and miracles to happen and things to see? Woo, come on, Lord, show me everything you want to give me today because that's the kind of God that we worship and serve. Golly. And then he says in verse 24, he did this so all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful. And so you might fear the Lord forever. We've talked about fear, haven't we? 
how it's this holy reverence. It's a recognition that God is more than able to do what he says he'll do. And you sit there with your jaw kind of at the ground going, wow. That's the kind of God you serve. That's the kind of God we worship. And we get all twisted. Let me say that again. We get all twisted up with everything around us. What the world's doing. Stop looking at the world. And start looking at the Lord. Start looking at the one that can do something about it. Look at the strong arm of God. Recognize his faithfulness. Hear the stories of his goodness and then watch your faith begin to rise. So we got to see that as we hear the stories, as we ask, our faith is going to rise. As we hear the stories of God's faithfulness, there's something that's going to go up inside us and that's the fear of the Lord. Something's going to go up inside us. It's, it's, It's this fear and this trust of him. Every time I hear a story or a testimony of someone's life changing or of some situation that God did something with, my fear goes up. My trust goes up. And I'm able to do the things God has called me to do. And so we got to ask. We got to listen. But we also got to act. When God, when you ask God for wisdom, Ask, but you better listen. And then you better act. And then when you ask another believer to share the stories of God's faithfulness, ask, but you better listen. And then you better do something with it. What good is it to hear wisdom and do nothing with it, which James clearly tells us is not a good idea. Okay, I'm done. We need to spend some time praying, don't we? Some of us need to repent. We need to ask the Lord to forgive us because we haven't honored him. We haven't trusted him. We haven't, been, we, haven't, we haven't done that. We've been looking at everything around us and we're not looking at the Lord. We need to ask God to forgive us. You need to ask God to forgive you if that's you today. I need to ask God to forgive me if that's me today. Our church needs to do that. Come on. Repentance is not a bad thing. It just puts us back in right relationship with a God who loves us. So let's spend some time just earnestly seeking the Lord, asking for wisdom, doing those things. And maybe even after today, spend some time in the parking lot, socially distant. And ask somebody to tell you a story of how God's been faithful. Come on. Can we do that? All right. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for this moment. I know I spoke a little longer, but God, you just burned that into my heart this morning. And I asked that it would be fresh bread for this community, for this people, for anybody listening. God, would it be fresh bread for us today that we would just eat on it as we pray this morning. Father, we invite your presence with us as we pray. We need you. Would you meet us here right now? And so we're going to enter into a time of just individual prayer. Uh, There are some resources available to you on the app. And so if you haven't downloaded that, you can find those resources there. Just encourage you to use those to help prompt your prayers if if you'd like to. But we're going to spend just a few minutes now in individual prayer. And then we'll come back um, for some corporate prayer together as well. All right? Let's pray.